Welcome back. You're watching a Morning Prime and uh, this is the reading room. Today we are focusing on this seminal work by Marjorie, uh, which is all about our values and our destiny. A conversation on values in Kenya. And of course, I'm putting this particular emphasis on what the president presented to the Speaker of the National Assembly and uh, the, the Senate yesterday. Three documents, one of which was on national values. Remember also that is domiciled within the Constitution, that Article 10 of the Constitution has all these values that as Kenyans we should aspire to, you know, follow them and inculcate them in our lives. But do we even know these values as it were? But Marjorie has done a very good work. She has documented all these values in her book and how we can mainstream it and have a conversation on national values that we don't found in a sea of moral decadence as a country where we unashamedly, you know, abuse our children, we lie through our teeth, we steal this corruption that is rife and is tearing this country apart. It seems the conscious, the collective conscious of a nation has been said, but how can we revive that? This is what we are trying to broach today with Marjorie Kabuya here on Morning Prime. I just want to refer you to page 49. And uh, my, I want to orient my thought and conversation right now on education and national values. Because primarily it seems that we as a country were putting much premium and emphasis on the sciences. Remember you were told uh, as a key day, mathematics, mm -hmm. biology, chemistry, physics, all this you have to pass with flying colors. Yeah, and you know you're not to be at your peak, so uh, they used to say. Uh, but social sciences, uh, you know, if you seem to have gravitated towards it, you, you're taken to be a softie, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But there was a very, very, very big concern on why we were having these subjects, the social uh, uh, humanities as well. Mm -hmm. It seems, yes, we have brains, but we don't have a soul at the end of the day. We have a, an engineer but he doesn't have a soul at the end of the day. You have a doctor, but you don't have a, a soul at the end of the day. You know, you'll go and harvest organs from you, you, your patients at the end of the day. So we have all these, uh, you know, successes in the sciences, but when it comes to that human factor, it is lacking. And you say in your book, Education Act is totally in line with the Constitution, enumerating the very same values and a little more besides. These values are quality and relevance of education, accountability and democracy, protection of every child, protection of the rights of every child, inclusion, patriotism, nationhood, unity of purpose, togetherness and respect, good governance, participation and inclusiveness, transparency, human dignity and integrity. On page 48 it also says, uh, education is responsible for impacting relevant knowledge skills, attitudes, and values to learners to foster the spirit and sense of patriotism, nationhood, to God and let respect all that. Yes. Okay. All very good. Our documents, by the way, in Kenya are fantastic. We write well, we know what we want. What we don't do as well is figure out how to implement what we say. If we only did half of what we have read, half of it, we would be a different country. Now the question is, how does then the education system or religious system or whatever, how, what is the mechanism, what discussion has occurred about how to implement or to instill those values in, in the children that we are teaching? You are right. We used to read books that in our discussions on literature, I remember when I was a student, the things we were discussing were really related to your responsibility in society. Because when you read Shakespeare or, or Chinua Achebe and what has happened with Africa since independence, you were discussing what are we doing and how are we doing it. Now, uh, I don't know what they discuss. But you are right, we are emphasizing, just like in our discussion, we would emphasize a lot on how to grow the economy, how to do the infrastructure, because it is necessary. I agree completely, it is necessary. So we will develop the infrastructure. And then we will have to put 
uh, roadblocks. What are those things called on the road? Because the way people are crossing irresponsibly, the way matatus are driving on top of cabs, that is a values problem. So we can have good roads, which we will spoil. We can have good cars that we will spoil. We can have a good school that we shall ban. We shall have educated people who use their education for good, but also maybe 50% for bad, like you say. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that is where we need to look at. That's why we need to have a conversation. What is the balance so that a child has time to think about the economy, about science, about becoming a veterinarian, but also how to be a fair human being, a just human being, a good human being, a value-adding human being, a considerable, considerable, considerate human being, a, a person who adds value and helps the country mm -hmm. to grow. Yes. We haven't figured that out. And that is why now we need to take these values this on chapter four, what the constitution says, what the national anthem says, love, peace, unity. Okay, sing. Our children sing every day, even we sang it when we were young. How do you do unity? You can't, you can't say love, peace, and unity, mm -hmm. and then you have negative ethnicity, mm -hmm. you have unkindness, you have violence. So there is a disconnect, a discontent. So somehow we need to be able to connect the dots. But we will only do that if we are having a conversation. What conversation are we having right now about the fact that dormitories are burning? Mm. Okay, we can close the school, the parents will pay sour. And then, mm. see, we had this problem in 2016. Yes. We are back. Yeah, what we did had, we do between we, 2016 and we now? We had 2016, we had. Uh, you know, a task force that was put forth, and uh -huh. we had the report, the Claire Omolo uh, report. It was just about, you know, the, the asshole in school. And they recommended what should be done. Okay. But here, How we've got a full circle do? again. Yes. Yeah. And we are going to go full circle again. And that's, that's the point, that there are many ways of, of solving a problem. And the legal way is a good way to solve some problems. But values problems need to be handled from a different perspective. Uh, uh, how do you think? It's like saying, you know, peace is not the absence of war. And peace, war is created by our thinking, the way we think, the way we plan. Yes. So if we don't change our planning and our thinking about war, we will plan for war. So war will happen because our minds, the way we are thinking, the way I am regarding you, the way I relate to you, is hostile. Mm -hmm. So war will come. Mm -hmm. Because right. it's coming in the, from, the heart from the heart and from the mind. From the heart. Yes. It's the same thing. How are we going to stop? The question that I really would like to discuss thoroughly, from a values perspective, we see whether we will make a difference. How are we going to stop our youth from burning our schools? Let's talk about that. Nationally. Do we, do we, do we point accusatory fingers to the way we are parenting? Uh, definitely. And, uh, it's one of because the we, we've ways. left all that responsibility to, to the teachers and, you know... They uh, can do it. Yes, and our house managers, so to speak, yes. yeah, that we don't know what they're watching, we don't know what they're listening to. Yes. Yeah, even the music they, they really listen, listen to, to really matters uh, at the end of the day because it patterns and fashions emotionally how, you know, your character will be. Yes. If you listen to a very aggressive music, of course, also you're going to be very erratic and very aggressive as well. Yes. And I think that is a part of music that people don't really uh, realize how emotionally mm -hmm. it patterns you and gives you that particular rhythm. So tell me, when we have, you know, this, this beautiful document, you come up with this beautiful book as well. At the end of the day, we have also a, direct, a directorate on national values. Mm -hmm. I know it used to be domiciled at the Ministry of Justice. Uh, we no longer have that particular ministry, but I know right now, if I may remember well, it is under the office of the president. And they are the, the, the directorate that prepare these national values that president has to present to parliament with each and every state of the nation address. My question, and you might not even know, I've always wondered, all these state of the nation addresses we've had, we've had this documented, I mean, this document presented to the speakers, mm. the national values. Mm. 
What are they for? What happens after the speaker gets this particular report? I you have no sort of have idea. no idea. Just like me. <laughs> Just uh, like uh, you. Maybe we should get the director himself here, Dr. Josiah, to come oh, and tell us where, that. yes, yes. Where, where but let me just explain that I, that is the, what we should discuss. Yes. Mahatma Gandhi said something very important. That is the, on chapter one when I began. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts become your words. Mm -hmm. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. If we do not deal with our values, our destiny is clear. Mm -hmm. It is precisely because we haven't dealt with all this. Mm -hmm. Effectively. effectively, we have, but not effectively, mm. or not successfully, and it will determine our destiny. Mm. That's what I'm saying. If we don't sort out our values, our destiny is decided, mm -hmm. and we won't be happy where mm. we are going. Are you happy with the way we're parenting today? No. Well. And it's not a blame game. I'm not saying any parent is worse than uh, it's self also. Because also the other thing we have to get out of is blame putting. When we stop putting blame on anybody, on politicians, on the education system, on the, and we say, okay, you guys, we are all guilty. Let's start again. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation and figure out where the rain started meeting us. And then figure out how we are going to solve this problem. Because problems we have, and also the other thing we have to get out of is denial. We are in trouble. So when you are in trouble, so you don't dig yourself in, mm -hmm. you start talking about how we will all get out. Mm -hmm. Because if only 1,000 children, it requires one child to burn a whole dormitory. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require the whole 500. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with that one so they don't endanger all mm -hmm. the others? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying everybody is not doing anything on values, but if a majority of us if 62% of youth that were interviewed said they will vote for somebody who will pay them, and yet our values, one of our values is democracy, that immediately dilutes that idea of democracy. It mm -hmm. dilutes that idea of nationhood. Mm -hmm. It dilutes that idea of patriotism. So what are we doing? All right. Looking at all this political, and I know, yeah, we're in the political season right now. Mm. Do you think the citizenry should also be putting this politician to task that, yes, you have all these good policies that you have enumerated in your manifesto, how you're going to revive the economy, mm -hmm. how you're going to steamroll and, uh, you know, uh, make our agriculture, you know, be more yielding, have our education system, you know, steamrolled and robust, you know, but the biggest component is how you're going to develop the character of a nation, starting with an individual, yes. and how you're going to do it. Then how, how, do we, how do we broach this? And I know, yes, this is very speculative, and you, uh, it is just on the fly I'm asking you. How then do we try and inculcate this particular concept that we're talking about, yank it from the Constitution, just put them also in your manifesto with the politicians? Well, first of all, we will not solve the problem until as a nation until we have solved it as individuals. as individuals. That's why I'm saying values education is key. Because you know, you, you have to remember we have a secret ballots. So the decisions are made by us. In fact, we have to stop blaming politicians also because I am the one who elects, you are the one who elects. So the change, we are where we are in Kenya because of who we are. We have to change the who we are if we are going to change where we are. Mm -hmm. So until we come to a stage where people are making decisions that are good for them, the, the trouble is sometimes we make decisions because of our values that are not even good for us. You choose a leader, and then the following year you are complaining, this leader doesn't do anything. My question is, he didn't put himself there. Mm -hmm. You did. But you see, that is the failure to take responsibility. That's why I'm saying the blame game has to stop. In order for you to take responsibility for your actions. As long as you don't take responsibility for your action, 
nothing will change. Mm. That's why nothing has been changing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in a way, we have to revisit how do we do this values education mm, then? Mm, mm, mm. True. Babu, true. It won't change. Okay. I think also the biggest component that we're not discussing is the church. Uh, Where? Because the church, the clergy. All the religious lady, yes. institutions. You, you think the, the church has really dropped the ball on this? I think so. I, I, I think we have all dropped the <laughs> I think, you know what, I remember when we used to go to Sunday school, and that's just because I'm a Christian, I'm sure a Muslim child would say the same thing, and a Hindu child would say the same thing. We were taught pretty much about right and wrong. Basic. Mm -hmm. Right and wrong. It is wrong to steal. You don't cheat. Yes. You don't. Basics. Mm -hmm. so those basics are no longer true. Do you know, I don't think there's anybody of my generation who even knew you could burn a school. Mm. Knew. You, yeah, we will shut up at you the idea You don't of, even, yes. the idea would never cross your mind. Imagine you just know you cannot do that. You cannot insult an adult. You cannot harm mm -hmm. other, you, you know. Mm. Now, apparently, you don't know. Mm. Or you think it is okay. True, 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 true. Thank you. Marjorie, we uh, struck for time, but I want to thank you also for this very cogent, short discussion we've had on this particular book. Uh, if I want it, where do I get it? Bookshops. It's in bookshops. It is in uh, textbook center. Amazon. No. You've not listened in Amazon. <laughs> not <laughs> digital know. enough yet. I'll probably get it there. <laughs> Not yes. digital enough yet. Thank you. But uh, uh, we can get it and Fantastic. people can call you. Marjorie Kabuya, thank you very much for uh, this, uh, you know, very seminal work that you've done, uh, reminding Kenyans that yeah, we need to inculcate these values. They're still in the Constitution. If you're not really aware of them, you should actually visit the, uh, you know, that particular chapter, yes. Article, Article 10 of the Constitution, where all these values are enumerated. Uh, we have leadership and integrity, that is chapter 6 of the Constitution as well. We have all these policies and documents, but implementing all of, of this is a different kettle of fish. And uh, Marjorie has endeavored to remind us that as a country, even the national anthem is a prayer, that we have values that we need to inculcate as a country, especially when we are heading towards a general election, where humanity needs to come before, you know, uh, the ballot that we remember uh, is my brother. It is not my tribe, but mm. we are all one Kenya. We are one people and we speak one tribe called Kenya. And I think this is a very providential uh, a book coming at this providential time as well when we are heading towards general election. I want to thank you for this voluntary effort that you put forth to come up with this book. Yes, it is available in the nearest bookshop that is near you. Thank you very much for your valid company. Uh, starting the show at six with me up to now. I thank you very much uh, for keeping the tabs with what is happening. Always be locked in on Morning Prime. My name is Dibala Nair.